First off, I just want to give uh, thanks to Blair Academy for this opportunity. Um, I definitely do not take opportunities um, lightly when I get the chance to speak in front of students, especially the leaders like you guys will be in a few years. Um, first thing I want to do is have everyone stand up. Everyone stand up. All right, yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to list off a few statements. And if the statements uh, deem true to you, I want you to continue to stay standing. If not, I want you to, to, to grab a seat. All right, everyone follows? Good? All right, perfect. All right, so think back when you were in middle school, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Were you thinking about, would you say the statement is true, that you thought that you would graduate from high school? All right, good, everyone's up here. All right, so now that you guys are in high school, of you guys are standing here, how many of you guys plan on graduating from college? That's the goal, that's the vision you guys have. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, two more questions. Next question, have any of you guys gone through tough times in your life? All right. Now, the last question I want you guys to have, and it might be difficult for you guys, but I want you guys to be transparent. How many of you guys can honestly say right now that you guys know what you're gonna do when you're 30 years old, right now? <laughs> and I've got all, all the elderly mates up here. <laughs> all right, all right, you guys all can grab a seat. The reason why I had you guys answer those questions and really start to do a self-evaluation is because a lot of times in life, what we, guys, what we fail to do is kind of evaluate where we are right now. You know, we just kind of find ourselves going through the motions, not really thinking about, you know, how did I get to you? How did I get to Blair Academy? You know, was this something that was an opportunity for me to go to? So it's good for you sometimes to think back. So I wanna, what I'm gonna do for you guys uh, for the next probably 10, 10, 15 minutes is kind of just share my testimony on how, how at one point you can have a vision, have a dream when you're 15, 16 years old and how things can shift at a matter of a moment. And then there's two things I wanna talk about, choices and adversity and how adversity can help shift you into a different direction, and how the choices that you make will affect that, that decisions in your future as well. So good, quick background on who I am. Um, Marty had give, give an example, I also was from Florida. I came up here in 2002 to play college football. I'm highly recruited, I had a decision to come to either Rutgers or Ohio State. And the reason why I decided to come to Rutgers was all for one reason alone. On my recruiting trip, they took me to NBC Studios, and I got to see Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Don't tell nobody that, but because that's a recruiting violation now. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, they took me on a, 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 a jet plane with a few folks from Florida, came up here, took up me to Saturday Night Live, got to see backstage, and I was just sold. Uh, at that time, I was a uh, director in my TV production studio class. And uh, it was just something I was like, man, I want to be communication. I want to work um, at NBC eventually when all football is said and done. So I came up here at Rutgers. Fast forward to 2002, freshman year, you go 1 11. A lot of you guys from New Jersey, you guys knew Rutgers was like, ah, Rutgers is a terrible program. Uh, they're not good at football whatsoever. So I came up here not knowing what Rutgers was all about. We had a difficult season, went 1 11. You know, I'm crying, missing home. I wish I was back down in Florida. But you know what, you know what, coach was like, all right, we're gonna do this, we're gonna try to change the program around and do great. So my sophomore year, you know, I'll get the opportunity to start. I started and get excited, and I had one of the greatest seasons for a receiver um, in a long time there. Sophomore year, I led the team in receiving, um, was one of the top Big East receivers at the time behind a lot of the Miami guys. So my, my future, my aspirations were really bright. I just knew I was going to the NFL. I was getting phone calls from scouts, um, from agents that when I was a sophomore saying, oh man, you're already ranked uh, to go at least in the third round after your junior year, if you come out early, you know, if you stay your four years, probably you, you'll go first round. So, you know, you tell that to an 18, 19 year old, you know, you get big headed. You know, you get excited, like, man, I got this, I don't really gotta do nothing. So, with that aspect, that mindset I had, you know, I didn't put that focus in the school. You know, so I was all about my football. You know, people will come up to me, so, so what are you studying at, at, at Rutgers? Uh, I tell them, yeah, I'm doing this and that, and so what are you planning on doing at the Rutgers? Play football. What kind of question? Why are you asking me that? I'm a football player. I'm going to play football. So that was the response I always would give them. So just to uh, fast forward a little bit, so in my sophomore season, had that great campaign. Um, one of the games, I, I played a great game, had over 100 yards receiving, seven catches, and I pulled something. I pulled something in my lower leg, and I felt a strain there. Not really thinking anything of it, I went to the doctor's, um, doctor's office, met with the athletic trainer there. 
And he um, said, you know what, let's just get an MRI on, on, your, on your leg there and see what it is. So they did an MRI on it, and then they came back to him with the results, and they said, you know what, Tuck, you have, that's my nickname, Tuck, um, you have some micro tears on your groin muscle. Nothing too serious, you know, what we do is just ice it, you know, it, it should be back, it should be fine. So what I did, I played that entire season, um, end of the season, it got to the last game, and I ran around and I caught a ball. And when I caught the ball, I ran this way, and the defender came in and hit my leg. So basically I did a split like this. And I just felt something like strain really hard on there. So it was the last game of the season, we're excited. We beat uh, Syracuse at the game. Um, did make it to the bowl game, but we had a really good, we won five games that season. One to five games, so that's an improvement, we're really excited. Um, but then the next day I went to the training room and met with the trainers and did an MRI again, and they saw that I had tears. Not a micro tear anymore, and I had a complete tear on my groin muscle. So I had to have off-season um, surgery on my groin muscle. So I'm thinking, like, this is what college is about. College, you know, play football, you get surgery, there's nothing too bad about it. But for the first time, um, I was in the hospital in Philadelphia at Drexel University. I was standing up in the ceiling just like this, and I just came out of surgery. And for the first time in my entire life, I felt invincible. Now, I, did what, I didn't feel invincible. You know, I always felt like I was always the best player. I always knew I was going to make it somewhere. You know, but the first time I challenged myself, I was just like, you know what? Something's not right. I just don't feel right. So at that point, I made it my point to you know, make sure I focus on my studies and my academics. So that year, that going into my junior year, I rehabbed back. You know, we decided about my junior year to get back. I started focusing on school more, dedicating my time in, in the classroom. And then get to the season my junior year, First game, first game we beat Michigan State, second game going there, I get hurt again, my other groin muscle. I'm just devastated, I'm broken. I'm like, what is going on? Like, this is stopping me from reaching my goal. Now I dreamed since I was five, six, seven years old that I was gonna play in the NFL. But what is going on right now? So I'm mad at God, I'm angry, I'm, I'm upset about what's going on now. So I go back to the doctor's office and they check out me and say, you know what, you got another tear on your left groin now. So instead of you know me just ending the season, they went to rehab and see if I can come back. So I started rehabbing um, for the season, um, missed five games, tried to come back for the sixth game. So in practice, in college football, I don't know if you guys are familiar, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you have practice during the year. So Tuesday practice, I practiced for the first time in, in five weeks. Everything went well. I was feeling good, I was running routes, um, crisp. Um, Wednesday practice went great, and then we had the Thursday final practice. I ran a route. Made a, ran a slant route, and my cleat got caught in the ground. My cleat got caught, and my leg went like this, and I felt a big pop, screaming and yelling. And I already knew what time it was. I already knew I tore my right groin. So at that, my season was over. So I had to have off-season surgery again. So once again, I'm to myself, I'm like, like, what is going on? My life is, is over. So I'm thinking that you know this, this is not the plan I have for my life. I had a bigger plan, a deeper plan. So another adversity hit me once again. So what I had to do, I had to choose to make the right decision. All right, you know what, I'm gonna rehab, I'm gonna bounce back from this, I'm gonna have this positive, this mindset, I'm gonna get around the right people, try to get back to where I was before. Well, make a long story short, rehab, come back my junior year, my registered junior year, have a good season, healthy, first time I'm healthy all year, um, for a whole full season, so I'm excited. NFL scouts started calling back again. Um, I have agents calling me, getting ready for the, for the 2007 NFL draft, you know, right now you're projected to go fourth round because of the groin surgery. If you have a great senior season, you might go as high as the second round. So in my mindset, you know what, yeah, I went through all the adversity. You know, it built up my character. I'm good. I'm doing good in school. I'm focusing on that as well. Then we get to our first game of the season. Um, we have a good game. We beat North Carolina. Fast forward to the fourth game. We're 4-0. Doing great. This is the best start we had in Rutgers history. Everything is going a lot the way we want it to go. Everything's aligned the way I thought it would go. Then in the fourth game, the Howard game, I'm running down the sideline. And it's just like yesterday, it still, still chokes me up sometimes. I'm running down the sideline and I plant and I just fall to the ground. I break my ankle, my season's over, just like that. So in a matter of moments, my whole dreams of having a great senior season and hope potentially getting drafted with Dash. But at that point, you know, I was upset and angry, but I knew I still had a choice to make. Was I gonna let that adversity affect me again that I had, or was I gonna push forward like I did all the time? So what, I pushed forward, kept on pressing on, and so you know what, I lost my senior season, that, that's terrible, but you know what, I have an opportunity to kind of get back rehab and train for the NFL draft. 
So I did that. Season was great season. We went 11 and 2. Um, the pro day draft was on February. So the whole time between December as I finished the surgery from January um, into February, I rehab. Started getting strong, got my ankle strong. I was feeling good, my ankle was good, ran great routes. Um, started doing individual workouts for NFL teams before the, the, the combine, so I was feeling good. So this is the date I was telling you guys in the, in the, in the cafeteria at dinner, is pro day. Pro day is a day for you to, to show off your skills and talents in front of NFL scouts. So there's nothing but NFL coaches, assistant coaches from all, 20, all 32 teams there. So it's, 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 your, it's your interview. You know, if you're going to medical school, this is your interview. If you're, going to, if you're going to go down Wall Street and you're going into a big bank, this is your, shine, your chance to shine, to you know the wow, the recruiter, let her know, like, this is the person that I want. So I'm excited, I'm pumped up, this is my day, I'm ready to go. So we do this one event, it's called the broad jump, where you just jump from here out there and see how far you can go. Do great, jump great, everything's going great. Um, then we move to this other event called the vertical jump. And the vertical jump is where you just jump straight up in the air. So I get up there, I'm excited, and I usually jump pretty high in vertical jump, around 38 to 40 inches vertical off the ground. And I jump up, and as soon as I jump up, I heard a pop. And I mean, I just let out the loudest scream ever. If you, just can, if you guys can just imagine yourself, you know, whenever the worst feeling that you ever had in your entire life, times that by 10, that's how I felt when I popped it again. Because I knew at that moment, that no NFL scout, no NFL team is going to take a chance on me again. Because that would be four surgeries that I had to go through. So I knew at that moment that I couldn't finish the, the, the pro day in front of the NFL scouts. And then my day was over. That my dreams and my aspirations to be in the NFL were over at that time. I cried. I was angry. I was upset. You know, this is everything I dreamed about was done. But, you know, one thing that happened that was the best thing that ever happened to me was when I, when I tore that, that same day and I was in the training room by myself while all the other teammates were, you know, working out in front of the NFL scouts, you know, assistant coach came up to me in the corner. He walked up to me and he just looked at me. He saw the tears rolling through my eyes. He understood the pain that I was going through. And he said these few words that have been sticking, sticking to me ever since. He said, you know what? You've had such a great career here. You know, things in life sometimes don't happen the way you want it to happen. But it's the way that you're going to, your choice that you make right now, moving forward, is what's going to shape you to be the man that you're going to be. And those words and that statement held to me so hard for my entire life. And it helped me to go through the different adversities that I went through. And it helped me go through the adversities that I know I'm going to eventually go through. And I share that testimony not to, to talk about myself, because I hate talking about myself. But I share that with you because I know every last one of you guys in here right now, have gone through adversity so far in your life. Whether it's a family who's been diagnosed with cancer, whether it's a situation back home where a loved one passed away, or whether it's some situation personally with you that you're struggling with that you don't want no one to know. We all have obstacles and adversity that we go through, but it's a test of a, a man or a woman's character after that, the choice that you make. You know, we can't, we can't choose you know, the family that we're born into, we can't choose um, if we're diagnosed with cancer, we can't choose that. But what we can choose is how we respond to after that. Now, how do I wake up the next day now that I have cancer, now that my NFL career is over, what am I going to do next? I have that choice. I have that choice to not let those circumstances affect my future. And I want to share that with you guys because as you guys are all freshmen, we have freshmen here all the way to seniors. You guys are going to be hit with these different adversities and these different opportunities for you to make the right choice. And I do want you guys to make the right choice because at the end of the day, guys, it's your life. You know, I had that, that confidence to come, that, the confidant to come to me and encourage me through the difficult times. Not every time you're gonna have someone to speak with you in your air. So you have to know that you have to have that, that, that willpower and understand that, you know what, it's my choice how I'm gonna be affected by this situation in my life. So with that being said, I just thank you for me to uh, allow me to kind of share a glimpse into my story. Um, I definitely want to also talk about how my, my role has transitioned to where I'm at now. Um, knowing that I wasn't going, to be, wasn't going to be able to play football anymore, I knew that I had a bigger purpose in my life. And I knew that my testimony and my drive um, would allow me to be moved into a different direction. So that's when I became a student athlete development director here at Rutgers University. And I work with all student athletes now on career, academic, and personal development. Because honestly, guys, one of the hardest things you guys will notice when you guys transition from high school into college is that 
you have such a nice structure here at Blair Academy. We have such great administrators here, teachers here, and they, they're here for you guys. But what happens when you guys transition into college is that you're on your own now. You know, they've provided you all the principles, all the, the guidance, the leadership that hopefully you guys will use. But what happens when you're on your own now? What are you going to do? So you guys got to make that choice that you're going to do the right thing. That you're going to continue with the time management principles that you guys learned here. You have to continue with the goal and the vision that you guys have already put down here to move forward as well in your life. And I hope that I was able to share that insight with you guys and encourage you guys that, you know what, you will be hit with those obstacles in life, but that there's opportunity for you guys to, to benefit from it as well. So thank you for the time. I just want to open it up for uh, Q&A as well. Any questions? It could be about college, high school. Um, I'm fresh out of it. I just had my 10 year, uh, 10 year high school reunion, so it's pretty crazy when you go back 10 years and you start to feel very, very old. What? So. Right? Um, have you spoken to Eric Legrand? Yep. Yeah, Eric Legrand. Um, we actually had Eric Legrand speak in front of our student athletes at our welcome back picnic. Man, Eric is a prime example of uh, choosing the right, making the right decision. You know, his choice. He could easily be sad and feel sorry for himself and like, why me? Now, why did I get paralyzed in that situation? But man, he is one of the biggest motivators. He's encouraging, such a joyful spirit. Um, we all believe that he's gonna walk one day. I mean, right now he just had his book. I don't know if you guys know that he just had a, a book signing last week. His book just came out about his story. So feel free to purchase that book. If you guys got an iPad, get it on iBooks there. But um, Eric's a great guy. Um, I tell you a story about Eric, and it's a personal story, but I know he's fine for me sharing this, that when the injury happened up there at the Meadowlands and they went over to the hospital and he just came out of surgery, we had staff that would rotate um, to go visit him. So I had the, the second day after surgery, I had the morning shift. So I'm up there at six o'clock in the morning, Eric is sitting right there and I'm just waiting for him to kind of wake up. And he wakes up, open his eyes, and I just know something different about him that time. He was sweating and he just didn't seem right. So I said, Eric, is there everything okay? At the time, he could talk a little bit right now, uh, at that time, but he had said these things like, I just had a dream. I couldn't understand what he meant. And I was like, you just had a dream? He said, I just had a dream. I just had a dream I was running. And when he said that, I was just crushed. I was like, wow. I mean, he, this is a person who just, just came out of surgery. You know, he just had a dream that, you know, he's, nothing that ever happened. You know, he was fine. He was running. Like a, like a kid playing football. Like any of us had a dream that we think about when we're dreaming, we're running, we're doing something that we love. But he just had a dream. He just woke up and now he's not running. You know, any other person I know, they'll feel crushed with. But his spirits after that was like, I'll be okay, I'll be okay. And he's been positive ever since. So, yeah, Eric, Eric is definitely gonna, gonna make it through. Could you tell us a little about your work with at risk kids and the parolees, perhaps? Yeah. So in 2007, I graduated from the university and I started interning at the Office of Continuing Education at Rutgers. And I worked with at-risk youth helping transition from the juvenile facilities into the public school system. A lot of the things, a lot of what at-risk youth is, a lot of them come from poor family backgrounds, no structure in their life, and they've been hit with circumstances that have been out of their control. And they've made decisions in their life that haven't been the right decision. So what, I, what our program was all about was helping them make the right decision, transition them, get them a job, start building life skills of just being you know, accountable to their actions and start building the structure in their life. So a lot of those things that we did with the program in Newark is what we transitioned with our student athletes now about career development, you know, meeting with professionals, having professionalism, you know, financial management. We did a lot with the parolees as well, just managing their money as well. So a lot of things that, you know, even though it doesn't, you know, seem like it, 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 it comes from an athletic background, it, it, it also focuses on regular students as well, traditional students. You know, things that the average students go through can also be a positive thing for traditional students in terms of just discipline, financial management, and making right choices. Right. Have you ever seen someone go through your same situation where the goal is just didn't, didn't work out like that? And, yeah, and it happens every day. It's gonna happen again this year. You know, we have 21 seniors graduating from football. We have around 120 athletes in general graduating. And then you got another 10,000 Rutgers students who are gonna be graduating. 
um, within the next year or so. And they all had dreams and aspirations of maybe going somewhere professionally. But at the end of the day, not everyone can make it professionally in, in, in athletics. Now, in terms of dis disappointments of injuries, that happens all the time. Eric Grant is a, a good example. Um, we've had guys on this who have, on the season right now with football who have lost their, their season and this their senior year and they're done. Now they gotta focus on their next step in life. But you know, regardless if it's a sport or not, you know, you guys are gonna be hit with all the different adversities. It's just a, it's how you make your choice after that is what's gonna really affect your future. John, you spoke about you had a mentor, you had the coach that got you through this. How does one find someone for that? Because if you didn't have this person, what would have happened? Yeah, I, honestly, I don't know what would have happened. I don't know how my mindset would have been after that if I didn't hear those words right after it happened. So I do encourage you guys, you have such excellent resources here that Blair Academy provides you guys that you tap into it, you know. One of the things that I always do when I speak with, with high school students is that, you know, I leave my contact information, my email. Anytime that you need any advice on anything, I'm a quick email away. And you need to find someone in your in your own circle that you can always rely on, whether it's a you know a family friend, whether it's an administrator here, or it's someone that you trust that you can kind of share your story and share the things that are going with you personally that can be your encourager as well. We got a hand here. Um, what was the biggest difference you noticed when you transitioned from playing football in high school to playing football in college? Guys are bigger. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how many of you guys follow college football, but when I first got to, to the Big East at Rutgers, they had University of Miami, Virginia Tech, Boston College. And um, to this day, I remember going against uh, Jonathan Vilma, Sean Taylor, Andre Rowe, all these NFL players now. And I caught a ball and I ran. I got, I mean, I got destroyed. First play. Um, and that was kind of like a welcome to college moment. But um, that's, a lot of guys are just bigger, stronger, faster now from high school to college. And you have to be a student of the game. Um, in high school, you probably didn't watch film in your sport as much, but in college, it's all about watching film and preparing. And that's no different than from high school studies to college studies. You gotta turn it up enough. These two are here in college now, they, got, they can tell you that as well. You know, it's, if you're in big lecture halls like this now, and the professor's just kind of speaking to you guys, you know, to the whole audience, not speaking to you kind of directly one-on-one, -on -one. so, it's more, you, you, it's more accountability on the student now when you go from high school to college. In the back, yep. Um, how long have you been playing football for? Did you start in high school or did you start earlier? So I started, the first sport I ever played was, uh, believe it or not, was tennis. Any tennis players here? No? All right, there you go, all right. Much love for tennis. Um, so that was the first sport I played, and then um, I didn't play football, organized football until my sophomore year in high school. I played flag, flag football in middle school. Um, I was only like 140 pounds. My parents was not having that. They wanted me playing any contact sport, so I didn't get to play until I got to sophomore year in high school where I weighed like 150. So, yeah. I put on a lot of weight when I got to, to college. Yeah, the question? Go how might your story have been different had you not been so focused on football and simply been taking classes and suffered a setback, unsure of what the next step might have been? Yeah, I think that I think it's 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 similar. I think honestly, it's similar in terms of if I if I understand your question correctly, if my focus was primarily on at my academics as less less on the sport. If you were a sophomore in college and weren't sure what you wanted to major in, weren't sure what you wanted to do and got dealt a blow, how might your story have been different in comparison to a single-minded focus on football, med school, law school, if you were just, again, taking classes, hoping to figure some things out? Right, it's, it's no different whatsoever. Just because my goal and aspiration was NFL, it's no different if my goal and aspiration was you know, medical school and then I just failed an exam, my entry-level exam, or I was looking to go to nursing school or PT school and I didn't make the, the requirements, the prereqs. So, What's great about the other things is that there's an opportunity for you to do it over and try again and really uh, really focus and make the effort to get it done. That's the choice you have to make internally. But with football, obviously you guys know there's a small window of opportunity with that. And there's some careers like that where you don't have an opportunity to excel in that career for a while. And it typically is all the athletic uh, sports as well.
Yeah, so when you get to college, you guys, all of you guys might have an idea right now. How many of you guys have an idea what you guys want to do right now? So all my professionals in the back, they could probably attest to this, that you might go in with one idea in college, like, oh, man, I'm, I want to be a physical therapist. That's exactly what I want to do. And then you just your eyes just open to other avenues. You're like, wow, you know what? I love counseling. I love the counseling aspect of, of psychology. So my, I want to be a psychologist now. So I just... I caution you guys and also encourage you guys to you know, have an open mind about college and about the, the courses that you, you take. Those first two years are, are a great opportunity for you guys to kind of take different courses, you know, from you know, biology, chemistry, to you know, social sciences, to um, any, other, any other concentrations specifically. So you get an idea of what you might be interested in. Tap into your career service department as well. They have excellent resources from workshops that you can attend just to learn. You know, folks, professional panels that will talk about whether marketing careers or communication careers. You know, I always had an interest in communication, but then I didn't realize I had such a passion for serving people. And it wasn't birthed until I got to Rutgers and went through different life experiences that I realized that, you know what, I have a, I have a passion to serve. How does your family help you like, in a situation where you got that last injury and you knew you were done. How did your family contribute to you getting through that and uh, just pushing forward? Yeah, my, my dad was instrumental. Um, by nature, my dad is extremely quiet. Um, I'm sure some of us can relate to our, some of our parents who were not that affectionate or extremely quiet, but you know that's the way they, that's their personality. Well, my dad was like that. And to the fact of the matter that he had called me um, once that was done and he spoke on the phone with me for like an hour. That was never ever the case. So that 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 confidence I was able to go in, go to um, it it helped me through the process. And then he also had me um, read a book um, that was kind of focused on power, the power of thinking, and just positive thinking. And it encouraged me through the whole process of just you know I, I just gotta have the right mindset. You know, it's such an opportunity, it's a blessing to to play Division One college football. You know, I know a lot of us, a lot of just people would love to play college athletics generally. And I had the opportunity to go on a scholarship with Full Ride. I have no um, student loan debt that I had to go through as well. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I had to look on those things, all the pros from the situation. And my parents did a good job of kind of focusing on that. Sure. When a Rutgers athlete comes on campus and they have some holes in their academic background, aside from, or whatever, aside from talking to you or people like you and psyching, getting psyched up, what kind of, uh, program does Rutgers have to help those people integrate into the larger community? Yeah, so what we do with our, our Rutgers student athletes when they come in as a freshman, um, they take an entry level exam so we can kind of figure out you know, on what level they're learning from the math side as well as the English side. And then that first year is all about time management, the first semester. So we have each student athlete, they carry around a binder. And on the back of the binder, it's a seven um, day calendar of from 8 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, and half hour time slots, every student has to fill out what they're doing. Trust me, my freshman year, I was like, what, what is this? Uh, why do you even know I'm sleeping right now? So I, I, I struggled with that. I must admit, I, I struggled. But you had to put, you know, I'm sleeping, I'm going to the training room, I'm watching film, going to algebra class, I'm going through a tutor session now, and you had to put every, fill out every slot. And then on the right column, it listed priorities. So what are your priorities for that day? So for Monday, my priority is, you know what, I need to finish my algebra homework. For Tuesday, my priority is that I need to get an extra um, hour of film because we have Connecticut coming up next week. So little did I know that once I stepped out of my college athletics and got into the workforce is that pretty much this is my calendar now, my blackberry. <laughs> and everything I do now is on this calendar focus on, you know, all right, at 8 o'clock, I got a meeting with David. At 9 o'clock, I got a meeting with a student athlete. And that just helped me to understand that they were preparing me for the next steps in life. So we do a lot of time management, goal setting, challenging the student athletes. What kind of experience do you guys want to have um, for your four years here? And how can we help you achieve that experience? So we do a lot of resume building workshops, networking events as well. Get a hand there. I will get you to that. What's the main problem that you see with like freshmen coming into the Rutgers or something like that? Yeah, and I'm going to answer this not from a student athlete perspective. Um, 
The question was, what's the main problem I see with freshmen coming to, to Rutgers? And honestly, it's the main problem I see at all institutions across the country. What happens is they're finally free. Now, they don't have the mom, the dad that's on their back. I see the guys laughing there. You're free to do whatever you want to do. So no one's checking your class. No one's saying, oh, you didn't get your homework in. You need to do this. What happens with people who are not structured, don't have the time management or the work ethic, is they just let college life, the party and scene, engulf their life. And they find themselves on academic probation after their first semester, and they dig themselves out of the hole. Now, some of them do dig themselves out of the hole. Let's say you get like a 1.9 or a 2.1 GPA. What's bad about that is that in order for you to get an internship your sophomore and junior year, they're gonna look at your GPA. And if you don't have a 3.0 GPA, they're gonna pass you up. And what people have, what we've found is a lot of students who struggle their first semester put themselves in a hole that they don't dig themselves out of until their second semester of their junior year, which is, they're already behind the eight ball. So the first semester, guys, if you hear anything I say today academically is try to jump out of the, jump out of the blocks. Like it's the most important semester of your life. Because it, honestly, it is. I know it's difficult and you might be in big 300 uh, classroom lecture halls, but if you focus and you create a game plan, you have an agenda beforehand. Um, we have this football player, David Malewski, who went to Sayreville, um, 3.8 GPA, freshman. Um, and he said, you know what, I want to make it my point to show the teachers that a football player can excel in the classroom. If you have that mindset going into your class, you're going to excel. So, we have a hand wave back. Um, I just was curious, you asked all of us in the beginning to do what we wanted to do when we were 30. And I would imagine that you're around there now. So 28. What, what is, <laughs> what's, what's the ultimate goal? Maybe for you it's 40 or Yeah, so I, I'll even backtrack there. When I first got out of school, I was just all about you know, nonprofit. So I got my master's in urban planning, and I primarily concentrated community development. I love serving. I love love helping uh, younger the younger generation. And then I was provided this opportunity to also serve and work in athletics. I love sports. So I really found my niche here in college athletics that I'm able to you know help the younger generation in a controlled environment within college athletics, and then also be able to serve them and enjoy watching their sports and kind of watch them throughout their four years. So my ultimate goal is to stay in college athletics. Now, eventually I would love to, to oversee sports and be a sports administrator um, over a sport and really have those hands-on experience. Because I know my time of you know, serving student athletes will, you know, end, will end at a time because I will be 38, 48, 58. I don't know if you guys will listen to me at that, end, at that age. But um, so I just, I want to stay in college athletics. That's about. Go ahead. Uh, what do you think about kids you know what? A lot of people ask that question and say, no, you need to finish your education. I do agree you need to finish your education. But there's also the standpoint of, there's a small window of opportunity for, for, for athletes to maximize into that, in that profession. You know, the average uh, lifespan of someone going to the NFL is only four years. That's it, and you're done. Graduate, you graduate 22 years old, now you're 26. You play four years in the NFL, nice career, have your pension. What are you going to do? 26 years old? Your life is over? You just started. So what I tell the athletes is that if you do have the opportunity, is that in the off season, you make sure you come back and take classes. So we've had a few athletes leave early and already come back and um, start taking classes. You guys know Ray Rice? Ray Rice is the running back at Baltimore Ravens. Well, he's a prime example. He left when his junior year. He's already started taking classes in the off season to get his, his, his degree. And he only has a couple classes left. Um, remaining. So you can always come back and finish your and get your degree, but you have to make sure that you mandate that All right, I'm going to finish my education. And there's other people who don't do that. And then what happens is, you know, they're 30, 31 years old, they don't have a degree yet. If they're not a superstar, no one's going to just hire you just because you were a former football player. You know, that's nice. I got free tickets to the game, but I don't trust you with my marketing deal. I don't trust you with my finances. So. That's something that you guys definitely, all the football players in here, I want you guys to take note of, or even wrestlers, whatever sport you guys are in, that you guys got to have um, a plan to get your education. How, how similar or different are the issues you deal with with the male and the female athletes? What, what I've noticed is that, for some reason, females just got it together. I don't know. <laughs> I can't figure it out. They get it quicker. Um, <laughs> there's a type out there. 
But uh, yeah, female athletes tend to have an understanding, and maybe because the traditional sports, like field hockey, gymnastics, um, lacrosse, there's no real professional level after college. That's the highest level. So they're going in thinking, all right, you know what? I need to get my life in order together. See, with us guys, we just have this idea that now we're going to be LeBron James, we're going to be the best football player, Peyton Manning, and then we're going to have these careers from the baseball players, from the basketball players, to even wrestlers, being Olympic wrestlers as well, and soccer players. There's so many professional leagues for, for, for male athletes is that sometimes they get skewed a little bit. So I had to find myself kind of bringing them back and telling them stories about people who've gotten injured, telling them stories about people who just who are good enough and just not good enough for the professional level as well. So good job, people. Yeah, so in high school, when I was a top recruit, yeah, I did not do a great job at that, of just balancing of the academics, because I knew I was going to play college football, and thankfully I did not get hurt in high school, because I would have been in trouble. Because I did not apply myself academically enough. I just kind of just skated by. I was good enough to, to get a, a, a 2.9 GPA in high school. You know, I mean, that, but that's not excelling. And I, I developed bad habits that I eventually I had to break when I got to college. I had to break them and really learn how to have study habits of how to take notes properly. And I know that you guys here at Player Academy probably guys break, take good notes here and learn how to do that. Well, in Florida, I did not learn that, so I had to learn that here in New Jersey. So I do, I do appreciate the opportunity that I had here at college to, to develop good habits. When, as part of your program, when you're working with um, students and they're trying to, they don't, they don't know what they want. That's a great question. So what we do is, I mentioned freshman year, we have that curriculum time management goal setting. So going into the sophomore year, this is when we really start identifying, you know, all right, what's your personality? So we have them take a career inventory test. Um, if they don't have a clue of what industry they might be interest, interested in, based on their personality, their work interests, their skill set, and um, also the kind of their leisure activities, we take this inventory test to kind of figure out, you know, what career path they might be interested in. After that, we just really focus on, all right, narrowing down our choices. What I encourage all the students to do when we meet one-on-one -on -one is have a notepad and let's write down, you know, what things that you are interested in. Do you like to work in an office setting? Do you like to, or do you like to be a more of a people person, talk with people? All right, these are some careers that deal with more, you know, involvement, communication, and these are careers where you're more, you know, analytical, data-driven. So, and that helps them understand, all right, these are some options. The next step from that is going to career events, going to networking events. We do a ton of career panels, career fairs, that you'd be able to visit tables and collect information from professionals, from industries um, that are out there as well. Uh, Florida is a hotbed of football talent, and it's also known as uh, having educational challenges. Do you ever think of going back home to your and becoming someone who can change that skewed or imbalance of education and athletics. Yeah, and that, that's one thing I've always kind of, kind of back, try to play the line of, of understanding. Do I want to go back to Florida because I'm from Florida and I understand the challenges that we have in Florida, especially in South Florida in the public school system. But um, I just know right now this is where I want to be in college athletics. But you know, I want you guys to really appreciate as we close here. I'll take one, one more que question. But we, I want you guys to appreciate the opportunity you guys have here at Blair Academy. Because I know a lot of schools, especially the schools I used to work up in Newark, that don't have the excellent teachers that you guys have. They're not even prepared to go, um, to, go to college. But unfortunately, you have this uh, athletic ability that allows them to get to college. That we, we get those athletes in here, and a lot of them can't even read, honestly. Can't even read, can I do math past a uh, eighth grade level? And they struggle. But you guys have this opportunity to maximize what you guys got. I always just close here. One thing I always tell student athletes is that you have moments and opportunities. Right now, this is a moment. You got to hear me speak, hear me tell my testimony, hear, hear, me, hear me tell my story. And then after that, it's the opportunity. You have the opportunity to 
listen to what I say and kind of apply it to your life, or you have the opportunity to kind of just brush it off and not do anything with it and move on. But that choice is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you.